Hi, my name is Alex McGregor, and today I'm going to show you how to use your Move Shoot Move Rotator to create Nightscape images. The first thing you want to do once you get it out of the box is make sure it has a really good charge. Included will be a USB-C charging cable that connects right into the side port here. And there's an indicator light on this panel which will show you when your battery is being charged and when it's fully ready to go. So that's step one. Next, you want to thread in the stud for your ball head. So on your rotator, one of the sides will have this raised area and it has an opening which your stud can go into. So you hand tighten it in. Then you want to grab yourself a flathead screwdriver and give it a little extra tighten to make sure that's nice and tight. The next thing you want to do is install your bracket for your laser pointer onto the rotator. This is crucial for polar aligning, but we'll get into more details about that later. While you're doing this, the first step is to loosen this white screw, and then you want to run your finger inside of the bracket and feel for a ridge. This ridge makes one end of this bracket smaller and the other end bigger. You want to install it with the smaller end pointed to the same side that you just installed your ball head stud. So once that's all lined up, you tighten this plastic screw. Now we can install our laser pointer. So the end of the laser pointer slips right into this opening. Then you can tighten your screw down. And now your laser pointer is ready to go. The next step is installing the dovetail that you're going to use for a ball head which you set on your tripod. So you get your dovetail and you're going to install it into a small opening on the bottom of the rotator. So you can spin it in, get it finger tight, and now you want to make sure that your dovetail is square to the rotator before you tighten it all the way. So it's nice and square. Then you're going to grab an Allen key or whatever your specific dovetail is set up to use for tightening and give it a nice good tighten making sure that it's still square on the rotator. So now this can go on your tripod and your rotator will sit just like that. The next thing we can do is make sure that our camera is ready. So for tonight, I'm gonna to be using the Canon 6D with the Sigma Art lens. And I always wanna make sure before I go out that I have fresh batteries and that my memory card is formatted and ready and you can also take this opportunity to preset your exposure because the exposure is always the same at night. For this, one trick I use is custom shooting function. And with these, you can make sure that your camera's ready just by switching it to this function. It sets your ISO, your white balance, all of your exposure information, so it's ready to go before you're even out there. Another thing you can do is install your wireless transmitter. For tonight, I'm going to be using the Pixel Pro Intervalometer. This is a really important tool because you can control all of your camera settings as far as your exposure time without having to touch it and potentially throwing off your alignment. Another thing you want to make sure you have is a way of leveling your tripod. Some tripods come with a bubble level, but other ones don't, and for that I get a small portable bubble level. This one has a magnet on it so that when you're out there setting up, you will need to make sure your tripod is perfectly level and this is good for that. You can also set up on your camera the next dovetail for your next ball head, which will mount to this stud that we installed earlier. So again, you spin that on, make sure it's straight and give it a nice tighten and you're ready to go. It's a good idea to actually plan your exposure. Because we're using a rotator, we're not limited to just 15 or 30 seconds, but we can shoot for several minutes at a time. So we need to do the math and build our exposure now so we're all ready to go once we're out there. For this, I'm gonna grab a piece of paper. Okay, so a good starting exposure when we're shooting with, say, a 24 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, would be ISO 6400, F2.8 if your lens can do that. 
And we'll start off with shooting for about 15 seconds. So this is a really good exposure if you don't have a tracker. It'll get a nice image of the night sky and it won't have very noticeable star trails. But because we are using this tracker, we can change our exposure time to almost anything. So let's do some math and figure out if we want to take our 15 second exposure and turn it into one minute or two minute, what we can do with these other settings. So if we increase to a one minute exposure, we're adding two stops of light because that exposure is so long. So we'll write plus two. We're gonna leave our aperture at the same, 2.8. Now we added two stops of exposure here, so we need to take two stops of exposure away from here. So we can go to 3200, that's one stop. Then we can go to 1600, that's two stops. And at this point, it'd be good to take a test image using our rotator to make sure that we're not getting any star trails. If it looks good at one minute, we can get even a better signal to noise ratio by lowering our ISO and increasing our exposure time. So let's go to two minutes. Now we wanna subtract uh, one stop of exposure again from our ISO. So we'll go from 1600 to 800 and we'll keep it F2.8. So this is the beginning of when you can really start to see the benefits of your sky tracker. Because we're shooting for two minutes without getting star trails, that lower ISO of 800 is gonna produce much, much cleaner images. But say we wanna do something to clear up the corners of our images and get rid of the coma. We can do that by stopping our lens down. So, if we keep our ISO at 800, but we change our aperture by a stop, let's change it to F4. That is getting rid of one stop of light. So we need to add a stop of light to our exposure time. So we're at two minutes, let's go all the way to four minutes. So this is a simple version of the math that you can do and prepare before you even get out there so that you can create very clean images at ISO 800 and at F4 with a four minute tracked exposure because you're using your rotator. Now this isn't an exact formula. This is what's worked for me with my camera and my lens, but this is where you get to really experiment and see with your camera and lens set up and with your ability to polar align your scope, you can shoot for four minutes or maybe even more and create exactly what type of image you want. So this is a good thing to learn, to memorize, and to practice. And then once you're out there, you can really have full control of what type of image you're creating. Now let's go outside and we're actually gonna set up our rotator on our tripod, show how we can polar align it, and then we'll be ready to go tonight. The first step again is that we wanna make sure our tripod is perfectly level. So we'll grab our little bubble level or use the one built into your tripod and make sure everything's right. Now that our tripod's level, we can install our rotator. To do that, the first step is to put on your ball head. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now, install your rotator with the laser pointed to the north. Okay, one of the best parts about this rotator, the move, shoot, move, is how easy it is to polar align. To do that, once you're pointed north, you need to find the North Star. You can download an app to your cell phone, such as Starillium, that will put a sky map on your phone. So that's one real easy way of doing it. But if you can't do that, my favorite way of doing it is by finding the constellation of Cassiopeia, the constellation of the Big Dipper, and drawing an imaginary line between the two, right in the middle of them will be one star out on its own that's a little bit brighter than the rest. That will be the North Star. So you want to loosen your ball head and turn on your laser, then you'll see a beam of light going out into the sky. And you adjust your tracker very subtly until that beam of light is pointed directly at the North Star. At that point, your tracker will be aligned with the axis of the Earth and you'll be able to track 
the stars without any star trails. Now, let's set up our camera by installing our next ball head. Once we got that nice and tight, we can put our camera on. At this point, I like to kind of eyeball it and point it in the direction of the stars that I want to be photographing. And then I turn my laser back on and realign and make sure it's still pointed directly at Polaris. Because sometimes things do tend to shift when you do set your camera on. At this point, we're ready to start taking images. So I'm going to show you now how I like to focus on the stars at night. Our live view on. And even though there's no stars here, I can focus on these power lines that are running across by zooming in on them to full magnification and then slowly adjusting your focus until they're as sharp as possible. And this works really well at night. You can adjust those stars, they'll turn into kind of a fuzzy globe. And then once they're really pinpoint small, you know your camera's focused and you're ready to start shooting. Now we can start creating images. We turn on the rotator by holding down this button right here, and then all the lights will illuminate for just a second. And to make sure we're in the right mode, we can use this button here, and we want the N and the star to be illuminated. The N is for the Northern Hemisphere, and the S is for the Southern Hemisphere. So wherever you are, you know which light you want illuminated. Now I like to test out my alignment of my camera by taking that 15 second exposure at ISO 6400, making sure I'm imaging the right part of the night sky. And if that looks good, I change my exposure settings to allow me to take a one minute exposure. Now, this is good to test and see if you have any star trails. If you do, you might want to adjust your alignment using your laser, or it's possible your tripod got out of level, but just adjust those two things until you can get really nice stars at one minute, and then you can go try for two or three or four, whatever works for you. Tonight, I'm gonna to go out and take some pictures of Orion Constellation over at Arapahoe Basin Ski Resort. I'm gonna leave you guys here for that part, but I'll come back and I'll show you how I edit those images on my computer. So I'm back so in my office and I had a great night out at Arapahoe Basin. I was able to track Orion for several images and got a really nice shot of the foreground. I've already edited them in Photoshop so I'm just going to show you how to take your edited sky and blend it with your foreground. So here's the foreground I shot, and this is the sky image. Now we need to blend these two together, and as you can see, there's no foreground in this image, so we need to expand our canvas. So we're gonna drag this up using the crop tool. We can go maybe a little bit higher than we think is necessary, but this gives us a lot more working room now changing the opacity of the foreground layer to about 50 percent we can see through it and then move our star image right where we want it to be we just want to make sure that the bottom of the star image is below the horizon of the foreground image so that looks about good we will increase the opacity of the foreground image all the way up it looks like we need to move it over and align it again. Perfect. Now we will use that crop tool to erase this blank space at the top. All right, now we have our foreground and our sky aligned, but we need to bring the sky image to the forefront by deleting the sky out of our foreground image. We're gonna use a layer mask to do that. First off though, we wanna copy both of these images just in case we make any mistakes, we can go back to the copies and restart our work from there. So now that they're copied, we're gonna disable the copies and add a layer mask to the foreground by clicking this button here. And we want to zoom in a little bit on this so we can see what we're doing. Now choosing the layer mask and choosing a brush with black, we can paint in the black into the layer mask and that will hide the sky from our foreground. Now for these more detailed areas, we want to decrease our brush size and get as close as we can to the foreground. 
Now that we've gotten this nice and close, I'm going to click on our layer mask, right click, choose select and mask. Feather it by 0.4, contrast around 15%, and we're going to shift our edge by negative three, or four, yeah, that'll work. You can also click this box that says remember settings, that way you don't have to adjust this every time you go to. Now we can just simply paint back over the edge and this program will re refine that mask for us. Sometimes with the lower contrast areas, you do have to switch over to the brush tool. Holding the Alt key and making it negative, you can get really close in there and define exactly where you want the mask to be. It's a good idea to zoom in and go back over the entire thing, but this program does do a good job of automatically doing this for you. And I think that looks pretty good. So we can hit OK. And now this will render that layer mask for us. And you can see it got all of these edges and details. So from here, we can choose our foreground and our sky image, right click them and click merge layers. So now we have a track sky blended with our foreground and this level of detail, like you can see in Bernard's loop and in the different nebulas in Orion and especially the witch head nebula right there, this is very difficult to bring out if you don't have a tracker like the move shoot move. With just doing shorter exposures of 15 or 20 seconds with a really high ISO, your sensor can't collect enough data. But when you shoot for one or two minutes in this case at 50 millimeters, there's way more information actually reaching your sensor. So I hope this has been helpful and I hope that you are able to go out and use your tracker confidently and create amazing images with it. So thank you very much for watching and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.